Well, Stu, we're here to talk about your sort of journey and how you came to be here. Could you start by telling us what those early years were like and when you first got into football? I think I got into football the way most um, do at an early age, playing with friends and growing up, playing a lot of my, uh, football with my brother in the back garden and things like that. And just, yeah, loved it. And then as the years progressed, just played with the school and, and boys clubs and eventually um, got into football quite late at around 16 where I signed for Inverness for, um, for one year, but that was my first professional team, um, playing for their 17s. And um, had one year there. During the time, my family moved to just outside Dundee. So uh, I spent six months training with Dundee United um, during that time. And at the end of the season, um, after Inverness got relegated, they had, uh, I think they scrapped their, their 19s team for that year. Um, and luckily enough, I got a two-year contract, youth contract with Dundee United, and things really progressed from there. You touched upon your family there. How big an influence was your family at that time, and particularly your dad, who I know you're really close with? Yeah, it was, um, especially during that time, um, big changes and you know, moving schools and commuting a lot. Um, my dad did a lot of driving in those in those couple of years up to Aberdeen, up to Inverness, back to Dundee um, on a Friday night and again on a Sunday wherever the game was. So uh, no, he's uh, especially my dad. He's always been there since um, I started travelling a lot with football from you know 13 all the way through to now, where he still comes down and uh, he's on the plane up and down on a Saturday uh, for the Southampton games. And you joined Dice Boys Club at 13. Um, they helped massively in your development and obviously your dad was extremely proud at the solidarity payment that you got for the move here which triggered it. Yeah, um, you know as we all are it means a lot um, to the club first and foremost, it's um, you know, a substantial amount for them and speaking to them when I was uh, at the Scotland camp, you know, they're delighted with it and they're delighted to see the progress, what a great influence that money will have on their club for, for the future, you know, really enjoyed football then. so. Um, yeah, it was a great opportunity for that club to uh, produce other young players and give them the opportunity that I had. And a lot of fond memories there, so to help them in that way um, is great. People think sometimes that it's, a, it's an easy route for footballers, but you had a couple of knockbacks when you were playing as a teenager. You had a trial at Ipswich and Aberdeen as well. Does that make you stronger in terms of where you're at today? Yeah, I think um, a couple of uh, you know times with a bit of Ipswich when I was 13 and. Um, also Aberdeen around that time as well, where I, had, I think six trial games in total were uh, didn't quite make the cut. So uh, not bitter about that at all. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, that's you know that took a big knock to my confidence. Obviously, the first ever setback I had um, from an early young age, you know, full of confidence and a lot of belief, and that was my first real um, setback. So dealing with that was a little bit tough, and then coming back into boys club. Um, and another couple of years there to then go back into the to, um, to a professional side was uh, was an interesting journey. And even after Inverness, you know, a little you know wasn't my greatest time, um, but going into Dundee United is where I really took off. And then of course you get a, a big move to Celtic at the time with your best mate as well, Gary Mackay Stephen. So you must have some stories to tell. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that was a that was a funny situation. Um, I remember texting him on the day asking what, what was happening with him because he'd already signed a pre-contract with Celtic but the rumour was that they'd make it permanent in January um, or start of February as it was at that time so I texted him during the day asking him what was happening I, I think he said nothing um, and I ended up seeing him a few hours later at the, at the hospital for the, for the scans so uh, it was a great move um, for both of us at the time um, going to a massive club in a very interesting three and a half years there. Yeah, because you did everything together at that time, you and Gary, I think they called you Zig and Zag at the time, it was that closer relationship, which must have helped you to settle into a club of that magnitude. Yeah, I think it's always difficult, um, obviously you know players that uh, are the club you're going to, but you don't know them on that personal level, so to have Gaz there was a big help, um, moving cities of course, um, so we lived together for I think the first six or seven months, um, which definitely helped, obviously moving into a new team and new environment. Was it difficult to sort of settle in there in terms of obviously shaping you to what you are now because the success there was unprecedented, two trebles and you have to win every week when you play at a club like that? 
but I took a bit of getting used to it. I think a nil-nil draw wasn't good enough or even sometimes a one-nil was you know, deemed a disappointment. So uh, living with the pressure and the expectation was um, took a bit of getting used to. But once you did and you learned to accept that, then it was um, a great place to be. But the last two seasons, especially when Brenda Rogers came in, in a domestic sense, we were you know, very consistent, uh, quite resilient in, in what we did. Because you played in Europe as well, which gives you a chance to play against different sides from different countries as well, which helps you as a player. Definitely, a good, uh, some nice experiences there, some tough experiences, some heavy defeats, but also some uh, you know really good performances. Um, I know playing in, in the Champions League is, is something I'll never forget. And um, was it difficult to make that decision to leave? It was. I think the season before, you know, I had some thoughts about whether it was the right time. I had one year left. Um, but I only had one year with Brendan Rodgers and you know, really felt we were, we were going to do something um, very special as a team. Um, so I wanted that extra bit of time um, as a Celtic player and under, under his management. And we did the dribble, double treble that year. Um, you know, struggle with injuries on a personal level. But another great experience, another great season where I learned a lot as a player. In the summer I felt it was time to, to have something different, to have a change. I played in that league for like seven or eight seasons, so it was, it was time for for something new. As soon as you'd heard about the interest from Southampton, how did it sort of come about and manifest itself? I think I was on holiday when I initially found out, um, but as always I didn't like to indulge in the thought of it or um, you know overthink it, so I just relaxed and um, went back into Celtic training. Um, and I think it happened quite quickly actually, which I was a bit surprised about, um, over a period of two or three days. Um, and uh, before I knew it, I was down here and, and signing, which was obviously uh, a dream come true. And you've settled in to the city now. You're in Fraser's flat, I believe. It was his before. He's charging before a fortune, yours. yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what a business. But uh, do you feel like you've settled into the area and life in England as well? Yeah, obviously, um, you couldn't really get further south, so it was uh, a bit of a change for me, knowing no one. Um, a couple of friends in London, Obviously, no, I know George. A couple of friends in London, which is, is quite nice, it's quite close, um, but it's a beautiful area, a lot of nice places around. You know, feeling quite comfortable quite quickly, which is always nice. And off the field, you're quite an intelligent man. You've got a law degree, and is that a rumor? Something? Yeah, <laughs> that rumor. is a rumor. Nobody's <laughs> no actually... one's ever seen a diploma yeah. <laughs> certificate. <laughs> but uh, is that something that you take quite seriously, what you're going to do after you've finished, which is a long time away, yeah, of course? Yeah, it was something I started when I was quite young, when you know I wasn't really playing, I was on the bench a lot and um, trying to get into the first team at Dundee United, so it's something I started a long time ago and um, I just wanted to finish it once I'd began it, so that's the story behind that, but I'm really pleased to have done that and uh, you know had that experience outside of football. Well, I'm glad you've confirmed it, finally, <laughs> <laughs> that it actually exists. It does. Cheers. Cheers.